Hello. It is time. Ooh. Ooh. I got to turn that down a little bit. Damn. Deafen myself. Hello. 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 It is time. It's time for us to talk about the United States Postal Service. Because I have been ripping my hair out for the last day going through the news on this. And it is, it's pretty bad, folks. It's pretty fucking bad. It is good to see all of you. I wish that it was time to cuck some conservatives, But unfortunately, I think right now, we are all being cucked by conservatives and centrists. Your brain got eaten by like a by like a illithid or whatever. Those guys are awesome. Illithid ASMR would be awesome. Let's be real. How is everyone doing today? How are you all doing today? Me? I'm a little angry. I'm just a tiny bit angry. Just just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Oh no, and I'm out of soda, so I might have to go get a soda. Thank you all for being here today. And I hope you're ready to talk about some mail. Because let's um let's get a little overview of what's going on. Ooh, intellect devourer. That's cool. <laughs> USPS is bad because of the gay agenda. They sent me a gay letter. Uh-oh. Pop is not praxis. Uh soy is based. True. Soy is generally based yes it's very good for you actually you could soy products can be very very good source of protein um you, like soy is super important um for stuff like tofu which is delicious soda pop not so praxis it's actually pretty bad for you but i really like it so it's one of my vices um so let's talk about what's going on so over the last few days, we went from a position of the post office being targeted really hard by Donald Trump and being um, reorganized by Donald Trump's guy, who um, is a, 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 a investor in private delivery services like FedEx and, U and UPS, to literally physically dismantling the United States Postal Service. We're going to talk about how the United States Postal Service is one of the most popular institutions in the United States. And I know we've talked about this a little bit, but it bears repeating. So we're going to talk about it again. We're going to talk about how many people actually rely on the service of the, of the U.S. Postal Service. Hey, Zanzi. Um, sorry, I haven't responded to your messages on Twitter yet. Um, I threw out a whole bunch of stuff on Twitter this morning and then decided, you know what? I need to do my stream because I was supposed to stream today. I wanted to stream today. And then I woke up and I said, wow, I feel like death. Um, I don't actually know. Let's find out. Is the USPS, hold on. Let's take a look. It's true that Article 1, Section 8 says the Congress shall have the power to establish post offices and post roads. Thus, the Constitution allows the government to get involved in postal service, but it doesn't mean that it has to. Hmm. That sounds very difficult. Yeah, it, it seems like they're allowed to. According to, Wik according to this quick Wikipedia lookup, it does say that they have the right to establish post offices and post roads, but it doesn't look like they have to. This clause has been construed to give Congress the enumerated power to designate mail routes and construct or designate post offices with the implied authority to carry, deliver, and regulate the mail um, as a whole. The early controversy, uh, controversy was whether Congress had the power to actually build post roads and post offices or merely designate which lands and roads were to be used for this purpose. And it looks like they have the ability to do that, but they don't actually have to. Oh, no. No, Gina, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably go over them after we talk about the Postal Service, if you're still around for that, Zanzi. Um, I know, I know, I was, I was ha laughing my ass off at this. I understand there's some, there's some problematic schadenfreude there. 
The only blue lives that matter. Hey, listen, do you know what other blue lives matter? The I'm blue daba dee daba die guy. The I'm blue guy, he matters. Uh, blue man group, they matter, right? Blue man group, that's what they're called. Have you missed anything good? Not yet, Atona no Aji. We're about to get into it. Dab, we're about to fucking get into it. We're about to talk about, hey, look at my shirt. Have I showed you guys this shirt, by the way? Look at this. This is an awesome shirt. This, this is my Pathologic 2 shirt. This is the heart with the, with the twire growing out of it and it has the a very important symbol which i don't want to spoil anything um this is the heart and uh just so you all know just so you all know pathologic 2 is currently on sale on humble bundle for almost 50 percent off so if you don't uh if you haven't played pathologic 2 i literally cannot recommend a game more um than i do pathologic 2 it is incredibly incredibly important a uh, really awesome game and here's a link if you want to buy a copy of it because i promise you it will be a really really valuable experience for you it's a game about being a doctor during a plague um which is pretty fitting and yes hello everyone who's here hello everyone who's here today um i recognize i'm streaming today during a very popular time slot so we might not have all that many people in, but it's okay because the VOD will be important and I will upload it to my YouTube channel. Also, huge shout out to Gina Ragnos, who has been providing me with a bunch of really awesome thumbnails for my YouTube channel, which has consequently made it possible for me to upload a lot more frequently to my YouTube channel, which is amazing. So thank you so much. I deeply, deeply appreciate that. Um, it means the world to me because I am, am shit, as it turns out, at making thumbnails. And hey, Marinara, good to see you. Um, and uh, I'm shit at making thumbnails and it adds a lot of time to it. I don't have like I'm a very small channel right now, so that m literally means the world to me. And I just want to shout you out. All of you should follow Gina Ragnos. You can uh, you can watch their um, their content on on uh, Twitch. And yeah, thank you so much. It means the world to me. Um, so yeah, so okay, let's get into the postal service, okay? Because here's what's been going on. So let's start with let's start with the big one, right? Let's watch. Um, oh, you know what? Thumbnails are thumbnails are hard. Don't feel like you're being lazy. Like I've I've seen bad thumbnails on YouTube before. Yours are not bad. Your, yours have very clear branding, and that's important. That's like really important in a thumbnail. So I'm gonna open this up, and we're gonna watch. Wait, will it open? Will Will my computer cooperate? Let's find out. Here we go. Yes, it will. All right, we're going to watch a quick clip. And I think that you will find that this is um this is a pretty telling clip. Um Oh, okay. All right, maybe I will. We're going to watch this clip real quick, all right? Are you are y'all ready? Here we go. Hold on, let me make sure the audio's up. dollars for something that This was uh let me see when this was posted. This this was live on TV one day ago. So this was yesterday on Fox News. It'll turn out to be fraudulent. That's election money, basically. They want three and a half trillion uh, billion dollars for the mail-in votes. Okay, universal mail-in ballots. Three and a half trillion. They want twenty-five billion dollars. Billion. For the post office. Now, they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of these millions and millions of ballots. Now, in the meantime, they aren't getting there. By the way, those are just two items. But if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting because mm. they're not equipped to have it. And you see how bad it's been with three and a half billion dollars for... So in this little clip, in this clip, yeah, this whole interview was a mess. But in this clip, Donald Trump admits to opposing funding the post office. The post office has made a request for $25 billion to be able to actually deliver mail-in votes during a pandemic. 
in this interview, Donald Trump openly admits to opposing this money because it will prevent the adoption of universal mail-in ballots. Universal mail-in ballots, which has been advocated for by nearly every health expert in the country in terms of the election. I think the anchor is really scared at what is being said right there, because keep in mind that Fox is very friendly to Donald Trump and Donald Trump admitting that he is sabotaging the Postal Service on their network on national news is a little bit scary. That's pretty major. That's a pretty major thing for Donald. Tr like this is even this is even major for Donald Trump. Donald Trump makes a lot of goofs, gaffes. He says a lot of dumb things on the news. We know this. We so we watched some of that interview with Donald Trump. Um, the the Axios one. Everybody's seen the Axios one. The the absurdity of things that he said there. But in this, we have Donald Trump just flat out admitting that he doesn't want to give the post office money because if he gives them money, then they'll be able to have the option of actually doing universal mail-in ballots. That is pretty serious. That's pretty fucked. Like, I mean, I don't really even know how to express just how fucked that is. When the president of the United States is openly openly on national news which is now you know everyone in the world has seen this or not every every individual person but people from all over the world have now seen this and he's just saying yeah we're not going to fund the post office so that we can't have universal mail-in voting Yeah, oh, oh, absolutely. Yes, this is this goes on more than just like trying to prevent a change. Like mail-in ballots are legal. We do mail-in ballots all the time. Now, some states don't offer mail-in ballots for everyone. They only offer it for certain things. But states like my own, for example, Washington, has had universal mail-in vo voting for a long, long time. Um, like Like we've had it for years. And so everybody can can opt for a mail uh, a mailed ballot, um, and it's actually very very good, and it's actually pretty great because it uses existing structures to facilitate the vote, and it reduces the the thing that mail in voting does is it reduces the pressure of in person voting. Trump seems to have a consistently poor sense of what's okay to admit in public. I mean, yeah, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. I always describe him like a like a bull in a glass shop. Like he he charges in and kicks and kicks everything and he's just plowing through and his like cronies are going in and scooping up all the other stuff that they can and breaking other things while he's in there destroying everything that he wants. He's he he doesn't care. His, he's focused only on his own profit, on his own self-aggrandizement, on his own, like, ego. That's Donald, that's been the M.O. of Donald Trump for his entire life. He's a very selfish, very narcissistic person. And um, that leads to him making really bad decisions. However, oh, thank you, Gina, for dropping that in there. I should have done that before. It's just uh, my brain is, like, all over the place today. So... That's the thing. This leads him to being very haphazard with the stuff that he talks about. Extremely, extremely so. He will admit all kinds of things. I mean, when he was running for president, he said that stupid line about, I could shoot somebody in the face on Fifth Avenue and no one would care. And it's just like, okay. And his supporters are just like, yeah, whatever. I'm not honestly sure that Trump could reflect on his actions and tell you what he did. It's pure instinct instinct and ego-driven impulse yes i 100 percent agree and um this is something you see a lot with like very narcissistic people is that they're very on the fly thinkers they don't tend to build big plans they just go with the moment and they they rely on their um on the power of their immediate character and on the confusion and fury that they can instinct to navigate situations which as it turns out makes you great as a certain type of um of business person um am i a trans bender i am a trans bender i'm a blood bender believe it or not no i am trans yes of course um i am um Gnoblin. their plan is that they have a plan yeah um 
Also, before refusing to fund the USPS, there was a time period. Oh, well, guess what? You can leave. You tried, my friend. Um, we don't allow that kind of bullshit um, in here, um, quite honestly. That is not that is neither productive, nor is it kind, nor is it interesting. So, bye-bye. I'm sure you'll send me DMs. I'll see you later. Yeah, trans rights. We are a 100% trans rights stream here. Good to see you, Apostle Asui. A goblin? Is that is that Ganoblin GG? Oh, boy. So he rifter? What? What do you mean, what? You mean what from that person? Yeah. There there are a lot of... We get a lot of anti-trans people who pop in here just to say shitty transphobic bullshit. But it's all right. I am pretty stuff. I am, I am pretty tough. I said pretty stuff. I am not stuffed. I haven't actually had very much food today. I had some cereal, which is good. Yeah, you knew they were going to say... Yeah, and I had a feeling when they said trans bender. Yeah, I would be... I would I would love to, ha to have some stuffed crust right now. Ooh! yeah trans pride yeah fuck yes trans rights absolutely 100 percent. oh also i love this emote oh i didn't even know that that's a twitch global wow the black lives matter twitch global emote actually looks awesome i didn't even know that oh pizza yeah oh i should get pizza tonight i'm gonna get pizza tonight fuck yeah oh my god that one's so good linus Linus F? Who's that? Channel Linus Frog. Oh, that's so cute. You know what my favorite type of pizza I've ever had is? Was not, it wasn't stuffed crust technically, but it was a, uh, like, I think it's a Detroit or was it Detroit or, or Chicago style? It was Chicago. It was a Chicago style deep dish and they needed the cheese up into the dough, up into the crust. So like it was this big flaky like crust and they had uh, mozzarella like like kneaded up into it. And it was so amazing. It made the pizza all stay together and it was incredible. Like so much cheese. Oh, so fucking good. So good. Uh, one of the best pizzas I've ever had. So good. So fucking good. So, yeah. Um, yay, Super Mario 64. I love Super Mario 64. The music in Super Mario 64, god tier. That sort of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, seriously. Whole soundtrack, god tier. Koji Kondo. Um, so am I heading out? Um, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to be streaming for a while. I'm going to stream for a couple of, uh, hours. I have seen some. Yes, I have. Um, I've not watched like a whole lot, but I've seen a couple of speed runs. Seriously though, unironically making like a nice note to post to your USPS workers and stuff is actually, is actually pretty cool. And I can tell you as somebody who's worked like a manual job, that sort of shit, seeing solidarity from the people that you're bringing stuff to is super good. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that's a good, that, that can be a good thing. Like putting a message out there that says, Hey, we support you to the best of our ability is, is super good. Oh, if you haven't 16 star runs are a great react to this content for streamers who remember the game. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that sounds really fucking cool. Maybe we could watch one on stream sometime. That'd be fun as fuck. Um, we had this place that ended up going bankrupt during COVID that had a crust where the back bits were jalapeno poppers. That sounds so good. Yeah, so many small businesses rely on the U.S. Also, hello, Windleby. I am incredibly, I am also incredibly stressed and incredibly sad about the state of the postal service. So with that... Let's get back into it because we have a couple other things to go over. We're going to read a couple of articles together. I know today is going to be a bit of an article stream and don't worry. I won't bore you for too long, but this is fucking important. So we have just watched the, um, the admission by Donald Trump and you know what, just for good measure, let's watch it again. Let's just watch it again so that I want this to be in everyone's memory as we're going through everything. All right. Something that'll turn just out to listen be again. fraudulent. That's election money, basically. They want three and a half trillion uh, billion dollars for the mail-in votes. Okay. Universal mail-in ballots. Three and a half trillion. They want 25 
billion dollars, billion for the post office. Now they need that money in order to have the post office work so it can take all of these millions. They need the money so that the post office can continue working and handling the the sheer amount of votes that are going to come in through the mail. Millions and millions of ballots. Now in the meantime, they aren't getting there. By the way, those are just two items. But if they don't get those two items, that means you can't have universal mail-in voting because they're not equipped to have it. And you see how bad it's been with... So, yeah, absolutely. Don't worry. We're going to be getting into that. Don't you worry about that. We will be getting into that for sure. We have a lot of stuff to go through. So, let's see here. Um, let let us take a look right here. <sighs> For some reason, my browser is, like, not playing nice right now. So we're going to read a quick article from none other than the Washington Post. Postal Service warns 46 states that their voters could be disenfranchised by delayed mail-in voter ballots. Anticipating an avalanche of absentee ballots, the U.S. Postal Service recently sent detailed letters to 46 states and D.C. warning that it cannot guarantee all ballots cast by mail for the November election will arrive in time to be counted, adding another layer of uncertainty ahead of the high-stakes presidential contest. What this means is that the internal, all of the internal mechanisms that the USPS has, which are very... Are, you know, for their flaws, very polished and very good at predicting mail-in, uh, predicting mail volume, um, are saying that we cannot guarantee that the ballots will even arrive on time. So even if we currently move to mail-in ballots, th by the current rules, they will not arrive in time to be counted, meaning your vote, if you vote by mail, may not count at all. You may not literally get a vote. And as it stands, a ton of people are not going to get the right to vote. This is mass voter disenfranchisement. This is literally, this is literally democracy destroying. We have literally overthrown countries or assisted in the overthrow of countries for less than this. You realize the scale of how bad this is. The letters sketch a grim possibility for the tens of millions of Americans eligible for a mail-in ballot this fall. Even if people follow all of their state's election rules, the pace of the Postal Service delivery may disqualify their votes. The Postal Service's warnings of potential disenfranchisement came as the agency undergoes a sweeping organizational and policy overhaul amid dire financial conditions. Cost-cutting moves have already delayed de sorry, cost-cutting moves have already delayed mail delivery by as much as a week in some places, and a new decision to decommission 10% of the Postal Service's sorting machines sparked widespread concern. The, the slowdowns will only worsen. Rank and file postal workers say the move is ill-timed and could sharply diminish the speedy processing of flat mail including letters and ballots so even the 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 most simple form of mail to to um transfer is becoming difficult <laughs> yes zanzi oh the the classic argument checkmate democratists um with the, with the context, yes. And we're going to get the full context. I just wanted everyone, before we go deep into this, I wanted everyone who's here to have it in their mind, that Trump clip. And I'm sure we'll play it again because I don't want anybody to forget that on national news, Trump was willing to admit that he opposed funding for the USPS because he doesn't want universal mail-in voting. Yeah, this is fucking terrifying. I agree, Feminist Critique, 100%. This is terrifying. How does this even happen? Um, Numb Meyerlurk. Um, so the Postal Service wants money to be a Postal Service. Yeah, that's they, they're, they're very clearly stating, hey, we need this funding to adjust to the increased influx of of mail-in voting this should not be a controversial issue we're in the middle of a pandemic the postal service is one of the most popular public institutions in the history of the united states and i will provide you data for that um but we are struggling to give it even 25 billion which is a very minor cost given how much the um the postal service gives to us how much 
the Postal Service um, does for our country. That's that's a terrible experience, Tononawaji. My God. Anyone denying Trump is a fascist still has completely lost the plot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is like this is absolute fashy shit. This is election repression, one hundred percent. This is anti democratic beyond belief. Um the ballot warnings issued at the end of July from Thomas J. Marshall, Marshall, General Counsel and Executive Vice President of the Postal Service, and obtained through a records request by the Washington Post, were planned before the appointment of Louis DeJoy, a former logistics ex executive and ally of President Trump as Postmaster General in the early summer. So what this is saying here is that the General Counsel and Executive Vice President of the Postal Service— prepared this memorandum to the states long before even Louis DeJoy was in. So this isn't some kind of internal conflict. They were they knew that they needed the money. They knew that they were worried about this before Louis DeJoy even took over. Louis DeJoy has only made it worse. Significantly worse. What upsets me is that I'm a Republican socialist. Republicanism is the belief that the nation is a public space and should be publicly administered, answerable, and governed. The U.S. is a corporate oligarchy. Republicans should weep. And your president is a king. Let's not lie. Yes. And he is trying to build some sort of dynasty, even though it's a very messy one, and I don't think that there's any actual way for him to pass power to his children besides through money, which, I mean, is at this point the most, in the most directly influential on our politics. X and Owl says, COVID-19 has caused a fundamental service to a country to crumble under the weight of its own consciousness. This has to be a first in history. Um, I mean, COVID-19 hasn't caused it to crumble. The The Postal Service has, is doing good. They just need more funding. It's natural. Imagine, like, think about it this way. If you were to, um, like, if you were to go to work and work, like, a really hard day where you're, like, carrying a ton of stuff, you would need to eat more food in order to maintain your energy for that day. Um, especially if you were doing that for many days in a row, you need that energy. Likewise, the, the post office in order to deal with an increased, an increase in mail needs funding. It needs sustenance. That's a very simple one-to-one -one relation. Um, but, the, but you know, we've gotten to a point where the facts, even the fact of, of, of COVID existing is considered controversial and political, uh, by certain factions of this country, including the president of the United States, who engaged in COVID denial and still does to this day. Yeah, it it's it's true. Yeah, it's it's true. That's true, Zanzi. Yeah. What I don't understand is how people on the right can argue against the USPS. Isn't that how they get MAGA hats delivered to them? Yeah, and it's more than that too. A lot of a lot of red states are super rural and in super rural areas the postal service the Postal Service is, like, super important for the delivery of mail because FedEx and UPS don't have the same service level out into the middle of nowhere. And the USPS delivers to all addresses because it's a public service, so it has to serve everyone. Rural areas are the ones, rural Trump voters are the ones going to be, I mean, I would say they're the ones going to be impacted the worst by this, but they are, but that's not entirely true. They are going to be impacted very badly, but they're not going to be the worst. The worst is going to be the thousands of people who have their voting rights completely stripped from them and disabled folks. Here's one. Here's one to fucking pay attention to. Disabled folks or people who are homebound for one reason or another who can't get their medication. You do realize that most medication in the United States is shipped by the USPS. The United States Postal Service is the one that delivers m fucking medicine to people who need it. If you're homebound and you rely on medicine being delivered on a timely fashion to your house, the, the regulations around t timely medicine delivery are for the USPS, not for private industries. And that's why people who get their medication delivered are going to be really badly impacted by this because the, the mail delays, of course, right now, thankfully, we put a priority on those sort of things. But as we're going to see as we go in further, many, many states are already reporting massive mail delays, and it's only a matter of time until those mail delays start impacting high-priority mail. There are, I just out of curiosity, 
Just out of curiosity, I decided to browse around on Twitter a little bit and see what I could see about people talking, like just not not pol not pol political people, not pundits, not anything like that. Just wanted to see what business people, entrepreneurs, people running shops, you would not believe. If you don't believe me, go to Twitter and just browse through people talking about the postal service right now and you will find the number of small businesses, people who run shops out of their uh, out of their house, people who run eBay stores, people who do little side businesses. The the quintessential American small business are completely and utterly fucked because shipping their products via um, FedEx or UPS cost them sometimes as much as $10 more per package. That will destroy a business instantaneously. So the repercussions of destroying the United States Postal Service are incredibly hard to over-exaggerate. It is genuinely terrible. This is like, you know the game Death Stranding? Did anybody play Death Stranding? We're building our own Death Stranding right now. XN Owl 222. That's an outright idiotic system. Why would pharmacies exist if, if not to be accessed in order to receive medications on demand? I would never entrust the mail service with my medicine. But tons of people do, and they're perfectly fine with it because the USPS actually delivers medicine really well. Also, who the fuck do you think delivers medicine to the pharmacies in the first place? You do realize that, like, Logistics is really complicated. Logistics is incredibly hard and it has to be medicine has to be delivered from factories, often overseas factories, to the pharmacies in the first place. So it's not it's a uh, yeah, rural America is huge. People completely misunderstand how large it is. Having being able to have your medicine delivered to your house is a really big deal for a lot of people that live in rural areas because one, getting into the pharmacy might not be easy. And two, if you're limited, like for example, um I used to um I used to live in a like in a multi-generational house and um, the, the oldest person in that house was homebound. They can't leave. They couldn't leave the house without the help of their caretaker or somebody going and doing it for them. So that adds a cost, even though they're already paying for the postal service in their taxes, even though they're already paying for this service that we guarantee to everyone in their taxes, they can't, they won't be able to get their, they wouldn't be able to get their medicine anymore. Um, without sending uh, paying a caretaker to go into town or paying somebody else to go into town and pick it up for them. The the USPS is an incredibly important public service that's guaranteed to everyone. Over 90 here's Otano no Aji, over 90% of medication for veterans is delivered by the USPS. Out of one side of the Republican mouth is how much they love soldiers and support our troops and out of the other side is a complete disdain for them once they can no longer serve. Republicans only love their soldiers as long as they can earn money. True! Extremely true and that's also why Republicans r routinely neglect the VA. That's also why Republicans routinely neglect veterans mental health care. It's complete bullshit. They they only care about veterans when they can use them to score political points to fund the military, which conveniently the 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 military and the arms manufacturers that support that the military pays are often um paying supporters of Republican politicians. Weird how that works. Weird how uh, the military industrial complex is something that's been talked about since Dwight Eisenhower. Ah, yes, Atona no Aji, I forgot. Pharmacies have medicine teleporters. In fact, they have synthesizers. They just synth synthesize it there and then it shoots it into your mouth like a rail gun. Like it just aims at your house and you have to stand by your window and go, and then it goes, and it'll fire at extreme velocity the, the medicine from the pharmacy directly into your mouth. Amazing. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit more. Some states anticipate 10 times the normal of election the normal volume of election mail. 
Six states and D.C. received warnings that ballots could be delayed for a narrow set of voters, but the Postal Service gave 40 others, including the key battleground states of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Florida, more serious warnings that their long-standing deadlines for requesting, returning, or counting ballots were incongruous with mail service, and that voters who send ballots who send ballots in close to those deadlines may become disenfranchised. I don't know what that means, Andrew Richardson. Um, the UPS is one of the few who pays full benefits to make it fail. I don't know what you mean by that. I mean, yes, there was a, um, there are, uh, there is stuff like the, one of the ways that the Republicans made, um, uh, like put the squeeze on the USPS was by passing a law that states that the USPS has to have constantly, they have to maintain 75 years worth of pension um worth of pension pay in the bank um uh out of their out of their budget um or else they they um or, or else they're in violation of the law so yeah that is yeah of course republicans do make it fail they put laws they put laws in place um such as 70 having have forcing them which no other business no other business has that aggressive of a of a um pension backlog where they force them to have 75 years of pension on hand no you're good i just i just wasn't 100 percent sure what you meant um yeah yep um so yeah let's continue with this the postal service is asking election officials and voters to realistically consider how the mail works martha johnson a spokesperson a spokeswoman for the usps said in a statement in the in response to the postal service warnings a few states have quickly moved deadlines forcing voters to request or cast ballots earlier or deciding to delay tabulating results while waiting for more ballots to arrive Pennsylvania election officials cited its letter late Thursday in asking the state Supreme Court for permission to count ballots delivered three days after Election Day. So that's a pretty that's a pretty minor ask, isn't it, in the middle of a pandemic to ask to have three extra days to count ballots? But deadlines in many other states have have not been or cannot be adjusted with just weeks remaining before the first absentee ballots hit the mail stream. More than 60 lawsuits in at least two dozen states over the mechanics of mail-in voting are wending their way through the courts. So I just want you to get an idea of the picture right now. This is what we're dealing with. Because of this absolutely ridiculous approach to the Postal Service in the middle of a pandemic, because of this is an incredibly, like just an unbelievably dense approach, there are hundreds there are what 60 lawsuits right now currently thank you for the follow toffee deeply appreciated thank you so much um that that so because of this there's been 60 lawsuits already failed every single state in the entire united states is having to scramble because we won't approve 25 billion dollars to go to the most popular institution public institution in the united states this is unbelief undeniably an assault on our democracy like this is this is how this is literally dismantling it and we're going to get to that because we haven't even got to the beginning this is just this is just the administrative bullshit this is just the administrative bullshit they're pulling pulling wait until you see exactly what's going on just wait Oh, yes, of course he will, because uh, Amazon relies incredibly heavy on the United States Postal Service for the delivery of their packages. Incredibly so. It's hard to compute just how big America is. For reference, the entirety of South... This is Otono no Aji, by the way. For reference, the entirety of South Korea is only two-thirds the landmass of the state of New York. Japan is smaller than California. Driving from Des Moines, Iowa to Chicago, Illinois takes longer than traveling from Galway to Norwich. Public mail delivery in the U.S. covers a larger labor role than it does most, er most areas. USPS's importance for everyday things is hard to wrap your head around from the outside. Yes, we have relied on the USPS for so long they are some of the hardest working people and and they've been under attack by Republicans for decades for decades directly to the favor of incredibly fucking shitty ass 
private delivery per companies. If you have never had to have a package delivered by FedEx or UPS, you do not know the pain of having to deal with it. Let me just give you a little bit of an anecdote. Earlier this year, we ordered a mattress. We needed a new mattress, right? We had just moved in and we needed our fucking mattress. We paid for special shipping. We paid for specific shipping of this package. And we specifically put in the notes, hey, would you please be able to de deliver it to our door? Because we can't, we can't transport this large object on our own. So we paid extra to have them bring it up to our door. We received no letter. Uh, we received no knock, no attempt at delivery. They tried to bring it to the front office of our, of our, um, a part of our apartment complex instead of bringing it to the door. Now we never have this issue with USPS. USPS always brings packages directly to the door because they know that we don't actually live at the office of our apartment complex. Nonetheless, they, they attempted to make the delivery. Then I said, I called in specifically to FedEx. And I said, Hey, we paid extra for shipping. Can you please um, have your worker deliver it up to our door. They said, yeah, sure. We got a second notice that it could not be delivered. They never came to our door. We literally stayed home all day specifically to have this hat to, to ensure that we'd be there to help them bring it in. So then I drove over 20 minutes to the nearest FedEx facility only to be told, Hey, this is the wrong FedEx facility. You need to go to the FedEx ground facility. So I went to the FedEx ground facility at which point I, they said, Hey, we have your package here. We couldn't deliver it. And we were like, okay, well, I guess we'll try and take it home. Of course it doesn't fit in our car. So one of their workers came out and tried to help us put it in the car. And we were like, hey, thanks for the help, but it's not fitting in the car. And he's like, yeah, this is not going to go in. So we went in and then we were put to a manager. Then we were put to another manager. This is now we've been there for like hours on end. Um, and then finally, the manager was like, why wasn't this delivered to your door? I see that you guys have had have called in about this. I see you guys paid extra to have it delivered to your door. I see that you put delivery notes and instructions on there. And you're telling me that um, no note was placed on your no note was placed on your door. Um, yes, that's correct. The note was placed on the door of our of our office, not even of our door. So then finally, and this was we were there until their office was closing. The manager said, you know what? This is really wrong. I'll have somebody put this on a on a truck and take it over take it over right now. And you guys can go back to your house and wait for it and we'll have it done tonight. This was after this was a three day delay that we paid extra for. That is how private mail delivery works in the United States. When you go to a private company, you deal with this bullshit constantly. It is constant. They don't give a shit because they don't have any fucking regulation because they don't have any fucking promise of service. No, we didn't. No, we didn't because the process of it would have been because the process of getting comped would have been uh, would have required us to then contact a separate department because the manager can't do that. The manager can only authorize a redelivery. It's totally dumb. It's totally dumb. But they do that because they know that they can make money off of you um, and they're not a public institution. So they can hide it in their all in their own fucking labyrinth of customer service centers that move you over here, that tell you to call over here, that tell you to go over there, that transfer you to here. And they know that you'll lose your patience and just say, fuck it. It wasn't worth my fucking $50, but that's how it goes. Yep. Yeah. Nope. That's exactly what happened to Tononawaji. I was just happy that we actually got the package because our other alternative was to not get it or to go rent our own vehicle and deliver it ourselves to our own house, which is completely stupid. But yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? That's a great pompo. He's, he's, he looks like he's too cool for school. What a good, what a good boy. Look at those pompos. He's too, he's too cool for school with those glasses. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, 100% true. Yeah, I needed that. I was just, it, it makes me go wild. The amount of times I've had to deal with, uh, with private delivery companies and this type of bullshit, I could, I could, I could go on for days about this shit. I used to work 
for an airline. And one of the things we had to do was move packages like this all the fucking time. It was... Uh, it's infuriating. Also, I used to work with somebody who used to work for FedEx who was incredibly low paid and hated their job and regularly would brag about the times that they that they would just fucking do the, the minimal delivery possible because they hated it. Um, and yeah, that's just that's just how it is. They treat their employees like shit. And in fact, one of the articles I read this morning, completely unrelated to this immediate thing, was an article by Jacobin from a, from like a year ago about how many deaths FedEx has on the job. Do you know how many fucking people die at FedEx uh, FedEx uh, delivery centers? It hint, it's a lot. A lot of people die on the job. I used UPS once, and I got a letter about some debt I owed them that was bought by a debt collection agency or something. What the fuck? Yeah, also Zanzi, meh, good enough. I'm just glad it's all over. That is the honest slogan of living under capitalism. Yep, yep it is. If you've ever had to deal with FedEx, UPS, U-Haul, Jacobin, is it Jacobin? Oh, oh, all right, Jacobin. I didn't realize that. That's a mispronunciation on my part. Thank you. Um. So yeah, let's see what more there is here. Let's finish this article. So Trump has repeatedly claimed without evidence that mail ballots lead to widespread voter fraud and the process and that the process politicized the USPS. This in this week, he said he opposes emergency funding for the agency, which has repeatedly requested more resources because of Democratic efforts to expand mail voting. Keep in mind that this also is missing something. Democratic efforts to expand mail voting to stop the spread of the plague. The Postal Service's structural upheaval alone has led experts and lawmakers from both parties to worry about the timely delivery of prescription medications and social security checks in addition to ballots. This is what I was talking about. I'm glad they devoted one line to that. The slowdown is another tool in the toolbox of voter suppression, said Selena Stewart, Senior Director of Advocacy and Litigation within the Nonpartisan League of Women Voters. That's no secret. We do think that this is a voter suppression tactic. Vanita Gupta, a, Je a Justice Department official in the Obama administration and now President and Chief Executive of the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, said she viewed the situation as the weaponization of the U.S. Postal Service for the President's own electoral purposes. Um... Do you have a citation for that claim, Mario? Sorry, I'm not going to get into that. We're talking about other things right now. But um, if you got a citation, I'd love to go over that. And it's a, That sounds like a black book of communism thing. Yeah. I read that in kindergarten too. Yeah. Does that, in, does that include the Nazis or not? Does the 100 million people that die under um, communism, does that count all the Nazis that died in World War II or no? Everyone who drank water died. Did you know that? It's completely outrageous that the U.S. Postal Service is in this position, Gupta said. DeJoy in serve. Here we go. Here we're going to talk about DeJoy. DeJoy, by the way, DeJoy is the current Postmaster General. This is the one I was mentioning. DeJoy is the Postmaster General who has pr who has holds investments in private delivery companies and is a very, very avid Trump supporter. Um. DeJoy in service changes last month has drastically reduced overtime, banned extra trips to ensure uh, and banned extra trips that ensure on-time mail delivery. So keep in mind, this is that's a big deal. The way that you know, you know the um what's the USP, what's the fucking postal service, the postal oath? Is that what it's called? Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completed completion of their appointed rounds. That is the 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 postman's oath, as they call it. Um, the postman's oath says that you deliver no matter what. So previously, while of course there are extenuating circumstances like a piece of mail getting lost or destroyed by some unpredictable thing, post. Uh, USPS delivery people have been allowed to take overtime or pass their mail on to another person so that they can go and re-deliver that mail if there's mail that doesn't get delivered for one reason or another. That is now banned by DeJoy. So what is happening now, and I mentioned this in my previous stream as well, is that um, postal delivery people will 
have a whole bunch of mail that might not be done delivering, normally they would pass that on to somebody else or they would take overtime and go deliver that mail. Now they just leave it to the next day and it builds up in a stack. And another thing is that DeJoy has specifically told them to prioritize that day's deliveries and not the previous deliveries. So what ends up happening is there's a lot of mail that gets pushed further and further back and you have to prioritize that day's deliveries first. So there's mail that can get lost for weeks at a time. There's been reports of of packages being delayed in this manner for weeks because they because of the way that the internal organization has changed under Postmaster General DeJoy. Dab. Hey Endernax. Thanks for the thanks for the dab. Good to see you. Okay, and here's where we get into the other stuff. <clears throat> DeJoy in service to, okay, so his sole wholesale reorganizations ousted several agency veterans in key operational roles. This was called the Friday Night Massacre. Um, the Friday Night Massacre was when, like, I think it was 12 um, seasoned veterans of the U.S. Postal Service were just fired on a Friday night where nobody could do anything about it. Just bam, Friday Night Massacre, bam, gone. The USPS is currently decommissioning 10% of its costly and bulky mail sorting machines, which workers say could hinder processing of election mail, according to a grievance filed by the American Postal Workers Union and obtained by the Washington Post. 671 machines scattered across the country, but concentrated in high population areas. Hmm. I wonder what a high population... It's weird. It's almost like they're, they're decommissioning machines in urban areas where lots of Democrat voters are. Hmm, that's a little bit weird, isn't it? That's a little strange. Um, they have the capacity to sort 21.4 million pieces of paper mail per hour. So keep in mind that despite the fact that mail sorting machines are expensive to buy, they're very, very good at sorting mail. And what they're doing right now is decommissioning them. What are they going to do? Sell them for fucking scrap? In the middle of a pandemic, when the when the post office is saying we need more, not less, they're sending people in. DeJoy is sending agents in to go and turn off and take away the machines in urban areas. 10% of postal service sorting machines have been decommissioned. Swing states, urban areas. These are high these are incredibly important areas for democratic voters is what's being targeted. This is undeniably vote suppression on an unbelievable scale. <sighs> Let's go on. The machine reductions, together with existing mail delays and a surge of packages, a boon to the Postal Service finances, but a headache for an organization designed to handle paper rather than boxes, also risks hamstringing the agency as the election approaches and have led lawmakers to hike pressure on DeJoy to rescind his directives. DeJoy wrote in a letter to USPS workers Thursday that temporary delivery slowdowns were unintended consequences of his efficiency moves but that the discipline he was bringing to the agency will increase our performance for the election and upcoming peak season and maintain the high level of public trust, blah, blah, blah. This is a lie. This is fucking lies. There is nothing efficient about destroying sorting machines, about decommissioning sorting machines in high volume urban areas in the middle of a pandemic as we're about to hit an election that undeniably will require mail-in voting. That's, that is just unbelievable. This is, this is just a bald faced lie. If you fall for this, you have, you have been, you have been duped. Yep, exactly. A total lie. And by the time it's proven, it won't matter anymore because Donald Trump will have already suppressed votes to the degree that he can. DeJoy declined to be interviewed, but in a statement, the USPS described uh, the machine reductions as a matter of routinely removing equipment to accommodate the mix of packages and letters in the mail stream. Doing so will ensure more efficient, cost-effective operations and better service for our customers. How? 
How is that the case? How how do you gain that by removing ma mail sorting packages that can sort millions of uh, two two twenty one point four million pieces of paper mail per hour? Even if that was a long term solution and 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 in building and and investing in new machines or whatever was an was an answer. Doing it now makes no sense. Yeah, I mean, but. That's the thing. Everyone is resting on their laurels about Biden being able to win in November. But this right here is showing that that might not be the case, that we might not actually have a Biden victory in November, despite the fact that all of the polls say that he should win. And the reason that that might be the case, the reason that that might be the case is because is not because the people won't be voting but because their votes literally won't count because they will be de disenfranchised and stripped of their American citizen right to vote. Yeah. How much do they cost to operate? Who like, who cares? Like, uh, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's why this is bullshit. That's why you can just tell this is bullshit. Even without the emergency funding Trump vowed to block, postal workers can handle the country's mail-in ballots with proper planning, the head of the union says. It's a piece of cake for postal workers, said Mike Dimonstein, American, uh, president of the American Postal Workers Union. Johnson, the USPS, also said the agency is well-prepared and has ample capacity to deliver America's election mail. The letter to state detailing the concerns followed ramped-up vote-by-mail primaries marred by serious delivery problems. It presented a need to ensure the Postal Service's recommendations re-emphasize. Re now, keep in mind, this delivery thing is... is this is this is him saying, yeah, we can do it even if we don't get the funding. It, we can absolutely do this. They can't do that if they're if their literal machinery is removed. That can't be the case. See you soon, Atona Noaji. In New York City, for example, a 17-fold increase in mail ballots, 17 times as many mail-in ballots, left results of a June congressional primary race in doubt for six weeks. During a court wrangling over it, USPS workers said elections officials had dropped off 34,000 blank absentee ballots at a Brooklyn processing center on the day before the election, leaving postal workers scrambling in an attempt to deliver them overnight. Uh, some voters received their ballots after the election had already occurred and tens of thousands of voted ballots were initially thrown out because of the delayed receipt. Look at this. Look at this. That is obscene. This is obscene. The letter's warning about the November cautioned that many states that their deadlines for voters to request an absentee ballot are way too close to election day and that the Postal Service cannot adjust its delivery standards to accommodate the requirements of state election law. Again, we go back to the statement of the postal worker that they can do this if they have proper planning. It's a piece of cake if they have proper planning. They don't have pro proper planning. They don't. Donald Trump is impeding their proper planning. Where were we? Mail carriers, meaning the workers who actually do this, meanwhile, have warned that new cost-cutting measures at the USPS are slowing the delivery of mail ballot ballots in key states. This is targeted. Recent contests have offered recent contests have offered a preview of the of the potential consequences with voters, particularly in urban areas such as Des Detroit and the Bronx, complaining that their absentee ballots did not arrive until the last minute, if at all. The problems predate cost-cutting measures. A late return ballot was the chief reason absentee or mail ballots were disqualified during the 2016 election, according to U.S. Election Assistant Commission data submitted to Congress. Yes, we know voter suppression has been going on for a long time. Oh, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely, Trekkie. But the onslaught of vote-by-mail ballots driven by directives to stay at home and practice social distancing during the pandemic has increased the volume of delays this year. In D.C.'s early June primary, election officials drove around town hand-delivering ballots because the mail service was not quick, excuse me, quick enough. In Florida, 18,500 mail ballots arrived too late to be counted during the March primary. 
That means 18,500 Americans in Florida were denied their democratic right to a vote. That's what this means. This is nice speech for that. I feel like this is almost irresponsible reporting. Tens of thousands of late ballots in Pennsylvania were counted only after courts intervened. So there were tens of thousands of late PA ballots that had to go, that had to be, to, in order to be counted as a vote, had to be done so via the courts. This is so unbelievably fucked. 18 states and D.C. have eased or expanded access to mail ballots during the pandemic, allowing concerned voters to avoid potential exposure to the vi exposure to the virus at polling places. These policy shifts have brought a number of Americans who are eligible to cast mail or absentee ballots in the general election to a historic high of nearly 180 million, roughly 97 million of whom will automatically receive an absentee ballot or an absentee ballot request form in the mail, according to the t a tally by the Washington Post. An analysis of the USPS letters to states reveals that the threat of ballot re rejection because of missed delivery deadlines may be the highest for voters in four 40 states that receive serious warnings. 40 out of 50 states received serious warnings. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I'm sorry, the Washington Post's the Washington Post for having the headline Democracy Dies in Darkness sure is playing this pretty straight faced. About 159.5 million registered voters live in those states. Hint, that's almost half of the United States. The United States population is like 350 million, right? Right now? Actually, it might be less because of COVID. What is the population? What is it right now? It is 320. Yeah, it's just about 50% of the United States. So 50% of the United States is currently under an area that received a serious warning. Yeah, right, Zanzi. Yep. According to the letters, the risk of disenfranchisement is greatest for the voters who wait until close to election day to request or cast a ballot. The letters advise 31 states that regardless of their deadlines, voters should mail ballots no later than October 27th, a week before election day, if you want to guarantee to be counted. So there you go. There's your advice. If you want your vote to count, if you want to, if you want your constitutional right to having a say in your government to count at all, you better make sure that your ballot is in the mail over a week before election day in the middle of a respiratory pandemic. Marinara says, I think Trump is looking for a November 3rd win, and even the, and even if the courts overturn it by accepting late mail-in votes, it would take weeks and he would have gotten the optical impact of a win and then characterize a court overturn as a coup by the Dems. Yes, I think that is a very logical um, prediction. I think that's a very logical prediction for one of his ideal outcomes. I think the other outcome is... I mean, I think that's basically what he's aiming for, because I don't I don't imagine that that um, an election where he where there's a, a marked obvious decrease in the number of um, votes. Hey, Snowdrift, thank you for the raid. Thank you so much, y'all. Oh, oh, I don't have a shout out command yet because I haven't figured out how to do a shout out command quite yet. But all of y'all should follow Snowdrift. You can click um, here. You should all go give Snowdrift Moon a follow. Snowdrift does fucking incredible music that I listen to literally all the time. I find myself re-listening to Snowdrift's tracks all the fucking time. And a lefty. So y'all should go give Snowdrift Moon a follow. Thank you for the raid. Deeply appreciate it. The USPS did not offer serious warnings to the five states that have that have long conducted universal vote by mail elections: Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Utah, and Washington. As you can see, as I've mentioned many times, my state has been doing this for a long time. We already have everything in place for it, so we are not being as heavily affected because this has been here forever. Um hell yeah, that's awesome, Snowdrift. Um fuck yeah. For Nevada, which Trump accused in May of uh, uh, of trying to cheat in elections after it announced 
plans to conduct statewide primary by mail, the USPS delivered a clean bill of health. The state plans to mail ballots to all active voters for the general election. Under our reading of Nevada's election laws, it appears that your voters should have sufficient time. Okay, so this is just about um, um, Nevada. So we'll skip the part about Nevada. That's not that important. <laughs> not anybody who lives in Nevada, y'all are okay. The machines, automated facer, uh, here we go. Postal workers, meanwhile, are concerned over the ongoing removal of mail short sorting machines in areas that project to be hotly contested in the presidential race. Again, this is clear evidence of targeting. This is clear evidence of targeting. They're choosing to decommission mail sorters in areas that are swing states, in areas that are heavily democratic. Come on. This is obvious. This is bald faced. The machines, automated facer canceller systems, delivery bar code sorters, automated flat mail sorting machines, and flat sequencing systems can label and sort tens of thousands of paper mail items such as letters, bills, and ballots each hour. Purchase when letters and, and not packages make up a greater share of postal work. The bulky and aging machines can be expensive to maintain and take up floor space. Postal leaders would say would be better devoted to boxes. Removing underused machines would make the overall system more efficient, postal leaders say. The USPS has cut back on mail sorting equipment for years since mail volume began to decline. The machines, however, fundamentally changed the job of some postal workers, allowing them to spend more time on the street delivering mail rather than in post offices organizing it, which is a, this is a problem when you're immediately about to face an influx of letters. That's why, yes, if you want to, if you want to um, remove the machines in the long term, that's fine, but you don't do it in, when you're about to expect a massive influx, a, a sometimes 17-fold increase of letter-based mail. Yeah, exactly, Marinara, precisely. Yeah, hey gang, we have a huge lunch rush coming in, so we're going to decommission 10% of our grills to make more room and lower costs. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, maybe you could make an argument for it saving money in the long run to invest in new machines, but you don't do that when you're literally weeks away from an incredibly important election. And it's also really funny when those machines that are commissioned or that are decommissioned are decommissioned in areas that are swing states or heavily democratic voting areas that can be easily disenfranchised. So the rest of this seems to be mostly about specific states, which we don't need to get into here. So we're going to move to a different article. We have a lot more to talk about. We are not done talking about the Postal Service. I can tell you that much. You do it if you run the USPS like a business, since the more illogical and irrational, the more likely the CEOs will do it. Well, it, it's perfectly logical if your goal is to fuck the election. See, that's the thing. If your goal is to fuck the election, all of this makes a lot of sense. In fact, if you put yourself in the shoes of someone, okay, if I wanted to fuck the election, what is what is the what is the best thing that I could do? Well, uh, literally removing their mechanical capability to sort ballots would be one of those things, for sure. Um, so here we have a couple of other things we want to do. So that's the one, that's that's the article. Hold on, I have to, I have to grab our next one. Uh, we have so many to, uh, to go over. Here we go. I've got us another one. We're going to read these next. Here we go. Whoops. This is from Portland Mercury. Uh, Blair Stenvik. Portland Postal Union says the USPS is actively slowing down mail service. This was literally published, I believe, today. Yes, this was published today. This was published just a few hours ago, in fact. Um, 1.03 p.m. It's more than just disappearing blue post office. Oh, I didn't even mention that. I forgot. Let me tell you something. They, not only are they decommissioning mail sorters, they're decommissioning mail boxes. And in fact, there is significant evidence, um, video and, and, uh, and news, which we will read one of these articles, that they are removing post boxes all over Oregon especially in Portland, literally trucks pulling up, 
taking out taking out the mailbox. This mailbox no longer exists. Now, of course, there are procedures for which a post office box can be removed. Like, for example, what if you have a post office box in a neighborhood that isn't a neighborhood anymore or that many people don't live in anymore or an area of town that's like like got a bunch of factories now and it used to be residential. If it gets if a mailbox, for example, gets 25 or less letters per day, they can post and say they can post and say, hey, we're going to remove this mailbox. Previously, you're supposed to give at least 30 days of warning about that that is publicly posted and they're supposed to make an announcement to people living nearby that hey this mailbox is going to be gone soon because it's just it's not a, it's it's too expensive for us to maintain this box however here are other locations that was the regulation under DeJoy however that is not the regulation and in fact they're moving forward with removing postal boxes without any warning they're not putting 30 days warning they're just taking them out Hey, Limp Limposia. Good to see you. Thanks for coming by my stream. Welcome to the community. Having to travel further to deliver mail might make it harder for disabled people to mail things. Yes, it will. It undeniably will. This will have an impact on on people who need who need to drop mail, on people who might have a mailbox right out in front of their house who no longer do now. I wonder how much this is going to affect the election in November. A lot, Flowery Jane, quite frankly. This is this could literally completely upend the election. This is the sort of thing that upends the election. Because keep in mind, here's here's the gambit. Here's the position that, that states are in now. So states are being denied funding from the USPS. They are being, the USPS is, as I, as I talked about in my last stream on this topic, the USPS has trip has almost tripled the cost of stamps for ballots. So it costs three times more than would have been budgeted for by any of these states. And that's on the, that's put that cost is pushed off onto the states. So here's the position that states are in. States have to either say, yes, we're gonna do mail in voting. We're gonna do mail in voting by we need to tell everyone that they need to vote by the end of this of we need by the end of October. Not by November. We have two months to tell everyone that they need, even though that it says on your ballot that the that you can turn this in by November, you actually need to have it in by October. So the states will either have to choose to go to mail-in voting and accept triplicate costs on, on each pal ballot. So they'll have to take a huge budget hit. Then they'll have to also commit to informing people that the vote voting date has to be done earlier, even though the legal voting date is still the third. The USPS won't deliver it on time unless they vote by October. So that's going to be on the states to communicate that. And then third, they're going to have to deal with this, with the fact that there are less boxes, less sorting capability, and that there are already huge delays in other types of mail. So those are the three things that a state is going to have to take on itself if they choose to go forward with mail-in voting. The other option is to say, fuck it, we're not going to mail-in voting. Everyone needs to vote in person. At which point, we have a spread of the disease. Pretty bad. That's a pretty, that's a rock and a hard place situation. But you see where the pressure is going, right? You see that no matter which outcome is chosen right now, votes are going to be drastically suppressed. If you go with option one, states also get bankrupted. The, or if not bankrupted, their budgets are severely harmed by the fact that they have to pay so much more for postage and that they're going to have to pay to figure out how to communicate to their voters that the voting date has changed and they're still going to have a huge suppression of votes because there's going to be people who 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 don't catch the message that um, that you need to vote earlier. Yes. Also, imagine the lines for voting if literally everyone has to do it. It's a, it's going to be absurd. So not only are there going to be huge lines, not only is there going to be crowding and massive spread of the virus, because keep in mind, voting isn't done outdoors. Voting is done indoors, where the highest risk of spreading the virus is. It's done indoors, and 
unless you're lucky enough to have a huge stadium available near wherever you live, your vote, your assigned voting place is probably not going to be in a very open area. It's going to be in a school cafeteria, in a post office, in a town hall, in these very small areas that are really crammed. It's going to be a breeding ground for the disease. And we already saw this happen in primary states who went forward with in-person voting. I mean, yes, Great Magnet, I agree with you. It would be, but that's not realistic. Voting outdoors is not easy because if it rains, your ballots get destroyed. It's not easy to vote outside. Doing outdoor voting is not going to be what happens. It's going to be in the buildings where they are. Keep in mind that many states already have widespread procedures for in-person voting and assigned locations. I agree. Yeah, that'd be amazing, Great Magnet, but let's be real. That's not what's going to happen. That that's not going to be possible to be done in every place. Not every state is going to be able to change every single established voting location. Like, I mean, have you voted before, Great Magnet? Like, when you go and vote, you're given a, you're told you have a place that you go to vote. You're given a voting area. For me, I have an elections office in town, which means we go to that elections office and that's where we vote. I mean, I don't have to worry about it because my state has voter in, you know, uh, mail-in voting that's that's not even at risk. The USPS doesn't think that our state's at risk because we have a, a very solid mail-in voting system that's already well paid for and everything. It's not going to be changed at all. Um, yeah, they can limit the number of people inside of a building at a time, but that's going to make voting way slower. They like it's already slow if you I mean and keep in mind that there are places in the US where people have to wait hours to vote yeah we've seen this happen already this year this has already been done this has already been done so I went off on a little bit of a tangent about them literally removing actual post boxes, but that's the other part of this. And this isn't just, mind you, this isn't just in Portland. This isn't just in Oregon. This has happened in multiple states that there have been widespread reports and open admission by the Postal Service that they are removing post boxes. They're removing, they're lit. I, I don't know how to tell everyone that they are literally sending agents. Trump is sent, Trump's admin is sending people to go literally tear up mailboxes, literally tear out mail equipment and, and in the name of, of fucking the election. Also true, Zanzi, we don't have a national voting holiday. Many states don't have any rules for allowing workers to go vote. The voter suppression that we're looking at right now is unfathomable. It is huge. And this is all being pushed, mind you, onto the voters. How does anyone still think the U.S.? We're, this is not democratic. This is not democracy. This is not democracy in action. This isn't even a sham of a democracy in action. This is just outright voter suppression. What if they extend the time to vote in the booths to two days? Yeah, so like you can stand in line for two days. You have to literally camp out like you're trying to get like a like a first, like a Wii. Like you're trying to get your, the Nintendo Wii. You just got to camp out to do your vote. Ah, yes. I, I can't wait to camp outside to go do my, my fucking vote. God, this is depressing. It's, inf it, it's infuriating, which leads to it being depressing. Right, but when you do mail-in ballots in September, like they're talking about, before any debates that Biden won't participate in, that's uninformed voting. Just as, No, that is not just as bad. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? People have had time to get to know Biden. Like, yes, there are critiques of uninformed, vote, of, of uninformed voting. But first of all, the number of people who watch the debates is statistically rather small. A lot of people don't watch debates. Secondly, people can look up all kinds of stuff about Biden. There's all kinds of ways to get it. Yes, I, I do agree. There are always ways to better inform them. But that is an unbelievably stupid argument. I'm sorry. Who cares? Put him on stage. He already said he's going to go on stage. 
It doesn't matter. You're literally, this is like a whataboutism of unbelievable degree. I'm talking about literal suppression of votes. The the U.S. Post, the U.S. Postal Service, a government entity, is telling 40 of the 50 states that they are not, that there is going to be a high risk of disenfranchisement of their voters. 40 of the 50 states have been warned by the government that their voters are going to be disenfranchised. And you're like, well, what if they, well, wouldn't it be funny if Biden looked dumb on the debate stage? No, it's, wait, I'm saying that is a dumb argument. I never insulted you. I didn't say you were dumb. I said that was a dumb argument. It is a dumb argument. Also, uh, I do this shit. This is what I do. I yell about politics. So if you like it, you like it. If not, okay. But I think that's a dumb argument. I think it's a dumb argument to come in here and 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 while I'm explicitly doing, I've put a ton of effort into putting together the evidence of why the fuck we should be concerned about the Postal Service to come in and try and like, like concern troll about whether Biden would be a good debater or not. Obviously, Biden is a terrible debater. Not that I think that Trump is going to do any better this time around. Trump has not been on the best kick right recently. But nonetheless, how can you talk to me about Biden? It's like it's like if it's like if somebody was getting run over by a car and you walked up and you were like, "Hey, your shoes untied." Just saying. Trump wants everybody to hand in votes in person for security purposes. What's wrong with that? Nothing. That's not for security purposes. Fallen puppy, you're 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 being duped. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're being duped. That is not why. There's no security problems with mail-in ballots. You know? Do you know how many states? You know? You know? We've had mail-in. We've had secure mail-in ballots since the Civil Fucking War. Since what? What? Fucking 1886. 1884, when did the Civil War start? We started mail-in ballots then. There are very, very well-established security procedures that have only increased. Our our mail-in ballots are like, our mail-in ballots are super secure. They have all kinds of security features on them. Every state is able to do this. There are no significant security threats with mail-in ballots. That is invented. And every single reporter, including even Fox News, has brought this up to Trump. Mail-in ballots are incredibly safe. 1861. My bad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not as good about with dates as some people. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what? They're, sec they're not securing anything. They're not securing anything. This is about suppressing votes because as it turns out, when you make, when you make it, l when you make it impossible to vote by mail, the only way you vote is in purpose, in person, in the middle of a respiratory pandemic. A respiratory pandemic with incredibly high spread rate, mind you. We have 170,000 people dead in the United States. So I'm sorry if I'm a little bit angry about this. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit frustrated about this. But holy fucking shit. People need to be real about this. People need to fucking pay attention about this. I don't fucking give a shit what you think about Biden. I don't fucking give a shit whether you think Trump is, is, is uh, like did a good job for the last four years. This, this right now is an absolute undeniable threat to democracy. Polyhedral dice. I'm so sorry to hear that. Holy shit. 90. 90. Wow. That is a good fucking 90 years. Holy shit. I'm really sorry about that. Fallen puppy. Yes. Also, we literally... We literally just talked about the difference in risk between being outside versus being inside. 
you are you are incapable right now what you're doing is showing that you are incapable of confronting reality you're incapable of actually recognizing that donald trump is fucking you fucking you right now donald trump is fucking you in the ass right now and you're just like well what about shoppers People don't take this shit seriously. Uh, uh, fucking COVID denials all over the place. I get at least, I get fucking one person a stream. In my little dinky little stream, I get one person a stream coming in here and telling me, oh, yeah, COVID, uh, COVID isn't, you know, as bad as they say. 170,000 Americans are dead. And we are spiking upwards. We are rocketing upwards. There's nothing wrong with anal sex. It's awesome. Obviously. It's a turn of phrase, please. Use the brain cells, please. Please, please, for the love of God, please. I know, it's it's a terrible thing to even think about polyhedral. I know, it's really hard. Anyway, let's get back to this. I've had my my rant and rage. Okay, it's more than just disappearing blue post boxes that have Portland postal workers worried about their leadership undermining the presidential election. Joe Kogan, the head of Portland's postal union, says there are several recent changes to service that have raised alarm among local United States Postal Service employees about the hampering of Oregon's vote by mail system. Now, what do we know about Oregon? What do we know about Oregon? What's been happening in Oregon? Like 60 plus days of BLM protests, uh, open, open denouncing of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been black bagging protesters openly admitted to, by the way, that's no conspiracy. It was openly admitted to and confirmed by the Department of Justice, by the Department of Homeland Security. Both of these fucking talked about this. Yes, black lives matter and fuck yes to our, to all comrades in in fucking Portland. But let's think about it. Isn't it just a little bit weird? Hey, thanks for the follow, Kamala Harris. Or Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris. Thank you for the follow, Kamala Harris. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name correctly. As we know, it's very easy to mispronounce, but I want to be on the right side of history. Kamala, ha Kamala Harris, thank you. Thank you for the follow. Deeply appreciated. Um, fuck yes. Black lives fucking matter. Solidarity forever. Um, so it is just a little, it does just seem, it does just seem a little bit weird to me. It seems just, just a tiny bit weird to me that the state that's getting targeted the hardest right now, as far as we can tell by these measures is also the state where black lives matter protests have been going most fiercely. <laughs> True Trekkie. Fair enough. True. True. Oh, man. Oh, okay. So let's get back to this. A social media post about USPS boxes being removed in Northeast Portland last week drew national attention on Thursday, just hours after... Here we go. Yes. Uh, this is the one. What's the deal with those disappearing mailboxes? We can read this afterwards because this will probably do a better job than my, uh, than my disparate, um... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spoke too soon, Wendell B. It's all good. We were just getting into that. I I, I, uh, I have been working my way through and also getting incredibly angry and going off on tangents as I usually do. Hey, gynotype. Good to see you. Glad to see you're awake. Um, yay. Uh, let me see here. A social media post about USPS boxes being removed in Northeast Portland last week drew national attention on Thursday, just hours after Donald Trump publicly stated that he didn't want to fund the USPS because he doesn't want people to be able to vote by mail in November. A USPS spokesperson for Oregon told the Mercury that postal boxes were simply being removed because of a pandemic-related decline in outgoing mail and not for political reasons. <sighs> 
Kogan, the president of the local chapter of the American Postal Workers Union, told the Mercury he's still investigating why those post boxes were removed. But what's more concerning to Kogan is that the current removal of mailbox mail processing machines from USPS processing and distribution facility near the Portland International Airport. Look at that. Look at where they're pulling the fucking distribution units from. When we opened that facility a couple of years ago, we had 50 or 51 letter mail processing machines, and I believe we're down to 45 or less. This reduction started happening after Trump appointed Louis DeJoy, a major Trump donor, to the postmaster general position in June. Kogan said those processing machines are typically used to process ballots during an election and that the reduction of machines could slow that work. Vice News recently reported the machines are being deactivated or removed from post offices all across the country. Hmm, weird. It's really weird how the people who actually do this work are saying, we use those things for ballots. These being removed will directly prevent us from sorting ballots. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it polyhedral dice? This is just wild. It's wild. Fun fact, my governor, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, who I voted for, just signed an executive order allowing New Jersey schools to reopen. Amazing. Incredible. Holy shit, isn't that great? Why don't we turn every school into America into a giant disease vector in complete denial of the fact that, you know what? No, fuck it. Look at this. You know what? We're doing it. We're doing it. I wasn't going to do it. We're, we're going to the Bing COVID tra tracker. Let's, let's just get a visual aid. Hmm, here we go. Here we are in the United States. Ah, yes. Ah, look at those delicious red spots. I sure love that our government wants to reopen schools when we have 5,386,812 act uh, current case uh, cases in the United States with 2,500,000 active cases. Oh, and look at this. We are now over 170,000 fatal cases. Yikers. Let's take a look. Oh shit. Look at us rocketing upwards. God damn. This was all the way back in what, May? Look at our numbers there. Those are baby numbers. Holy shit. Holy shit. Woo. Let's see what these states are. We got California. We got Florida. We got Texas. We got, oh, New York is kind of flattening out, but it looks like they're starting to go up again. Oh my God. We got fucking, who's this? We got, te oh, that's Texas. We got fucking Georgia coming up soon. Holy shit. So here's some visual aid to just tell you. Here was what where we were at back in fucking uh, March. Look at where we are now. Let's take a look at the fatal cases. Spiked up here, and look at this. We're spiking back up again. Look, we were we were getting so low, and now we're going back up. What a mess. What a fucking bloody mess. Tonino Aji says, my favorite thing about the school stuff is that DeVos has a track record of hating on public schools. However, just now that it can possibly kill children, she's all for them. It's like she actively wants kids to be dumb or dead. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, that's a weird kink under the thunder, but all right. Fair enough. Male, I guess, can be sexy, right? America rolled, uh, we rolled a one. We, we, we have a negative. We, we, we rolled fine originally, but we just have a huge negative to our like organizational capacity. Make the USPS hot again. I mean, they do say, uh, you know, what do they say? People look, people look damn hot in a uniform. I don't know about the mail delivery uniform, but the hot post office ladies. I see. I see. Well, hey, give give your post office people uh, uh, a nice cold soda in the middle of this hot summer. Um, I actually we used to do that back in the day. Uh, it's not so much here because we live in a in a um, we live in a like uh, what's it called a fucking um, apartment complex. But what's the term? A big when they're like uh, high rise. What? Wow, my brain is like failing at the moment. Uh, wow. Tenement. Thank you. Thank you, gyno, gyno type. Holy shit. Blah. 
yeah, tenement building. We live in like a big tenement building, so we don't actually see our postal deliveries very like postal delivery people very often. But back when we used to live in a more rural area, we used to know our postal person. We actually knew, used to know them and we would take them snacks and stuff. We used to leave them treats and stuff in the mailbox. Um yeah. Oof. Oof, under the thunder. That's rough. Yeah. That's really rough. Yeah, most fucking most fucking dorms don't have AC and they're just fucking crazy hot in the summer. USPS drivers need to have all their drivers wear hot pants. I mean, I think they do, don't they? Isn't there like official thing like they have the shorts and the uh and the and the like button up t shirt and whatever and they have those like weird shorts, those really short shorts. Yeah, we used to leave them like we used to, we used to bake cookies and stuff a lot. So we would leave cookies in a bag and uh and a soda. And it was usually cool enough outside that the soda would remain cool. Um that's something that you can do to connect with people. I don't know. I just we just liked connecting with somebody who delivers our mail. Um yeah. Oh, sick under the thunder. That'll be great. Spandex hot pants. Oh, I see. I see. We're getting we're going for the for the USPS club. Yeah, I feel you. Oh, oh, that's, that sucks, Trekkie. Holy shit. Oh yeah. New Hampshire has much more mild summers than, uh, Virginia. I used to live up in that area. So, New Hampshire is fucking amazing during the summer. Holy shit. I used to have a lot of fun. I used to, to, uh, go to New Hampshire in the summers pretty frequently. Um, luge outfits yeah they'll be the fastest delivery people ever we're getting like we're gonna be we're gonna end up having fucking fragile here we go we're gonna end up with uh you're gonna end up with fucking fragile's outfit here we go there we go is this what we're gonna do is this gonna be the future of uh the the sexy postal service I don't know. I'm, I, I, I kept, I keep joking that like, I feel like my, the future of my life is going to be is fucking Sam, uh, Sam Porter bridges. There we go. Here, here's my boy. This is, this is going to be all of us soon. Hey, here he is. There we go. This is going to be all of us soon. We're going to be out there delivering the ballots with our, our baby, to protect us from the coronavirus so we can see the coronavirus particles in the air with our scanner and we'll be like oh shit we gotta sneak we gotta crawl through the coronavirus particles and deliver the package it's gonna be it's gonna be sick right that's our boy sam my name's sam my name's sam too the United Sexy Postal Service. They don't even need to change the name. You're right. Escape escapism does hit weird these days, doesn't it? I these days I'm just like fantasizing about crawling through the mud and having a baby that can help me see the coronavirus particles. And I'm like, man, wouldn't the world be so great if I had a way to see the coronavirus particles? Yeah. Norman Reedus. I love Norman Reedus. Also, by the way, small shout out to Death Stranding. Excellent game. God tier game. Yes, Kojima literally did predict the future. Uh this game is more relevant than ever. Um Yep, we are all Sam these days. We are indeed. Fuck. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Trekkie. Fuck those gender labels. Where were we? Here we were. Let's get back to the article. The USPS did not reply to the Mercury's request for comment about the mail processing machine removal. We will update this post if we hear back. Looks like they haven't yet. In addition to the removal of processing machines, Kogan, Kogan has also heard reports from union members of delayed mail, mail left for delivery at a later date. Kogan faults new policies from DeJoy for the slowed down service. Oh, that's great. I didn't know that. I can't comment on that under the thunder. That's up to you. You decide that. I can't comment on that. Um, myself and all the other postal employees I represent and the ones I don't represent are committed to the delivery of mail in a timely, efficient, and prompt fashion. By the way, let's just take a second. 
postal workers, heroes, gods, genuinely, the modern Hercules is our postal workers. Look at these. Look at this. In the face of getting literally sabotaged, we've got this postal union worker, myself and all the other postal unions I represent and the ones I don't represent are committed to the delivery of the mail in a timely, efficient, and prompt fashion. Gods, gods, kings, queens, monarchs. They are epic, unironically. A majority of us believe that all of these actions are an attempt to destroy the post office, to slow down the mail, and that these actions are not good for an organization many of us have dedicated decades of our lives to. Can you imagine? I just want to take a second. Let's just take a second. Let's just take a second, right? And let's think about how fucking rotten it must feel to work for the postal service and actually take it seriously work your ass off for the postal service for one of the most popular and well-loved and important public institutions only to see it actively sabotaged by a fucking cheeto in the white house but seriously can you imagine how fucking horrible that would feel